Hi everyone, welcome to On the Other Hand. I'm Ariane Zercher and today I'm going to be exploring another circle. I would tell you what stitches I'm going to use, but I don't have any idea what stitches I'm going to use. So I'm just going to wing it and I hope you'll come along with me. I have to give a shout out to Pat who was so lovely and sent me the most amazing little care package which touched my heart. I must say I I actually teared up reading the little notes. Thank you Pat. So sweet. So thoughtful. For those of you who have been following along I just want to say I hope everyone had a really lovely weekend. This was my first weekend that I did not post any videos in I don't know how long but it's definitely been over a month. I did however start designing a couple of projects which I'm really excited about and I'm going to unveil them in the coming weeks. In keeping with that project I'm going to do a little poll and ask all of you to to give me your opinion. So I'm going to put the poll in the upper right hand corner. A couple of people asked about a needle roll. So I thought I've wanted to design a needle roll forever and I thought okay I'm going to do it. So I took this up as an opportunity and I designed two. But my question is for the needle roll, do you prefer the idea of a closure with a button that has an elastic loop that closes the needle roll up or a long piece of fabric that has a little uh, hand sewn, you know, we could do like a little hand sewn uh, cast on bouillon around the end of it, that you would then take that loop, that long strip of fabric that we make and button it that way, wrapping it around. I hope that explains it. Um, I saw an old Victorian needle roll that had been done that way and I thought well that's an idea too. My initial idea was to sew two lengths of silk ribbon into one end so that you could then once you roll the needle roll you could then wrap the ribbon and tie it with a little bow and that way you could tie it as loosely or as tightly as you wanted. You wouldn't be limited as to how tightly or loosely you wound your needle roll. The other device was a magnet. Um, you can get little magnets that you embed into the fabric and they attach. I have some, so I'm going to look at that, but that would be another way. I decided Velcro wasn't a good idea because Velcro gets caught on wool, especially in ribbon and things, and then it frays it and messes it all up. So those were the options. I'm going to put the poll in the upper right hand corner. Would love for all of you to participate in it and give me your opinion and thoughts on that. Don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, click on the bell to get email notifications. I love hearing from you, as you know, so leave me comments, questions, thoughts, whatever, in the comment section. Don't forget to look at the description section because I leave links for everything that I use. So I often get people asking me, what is the tool that you're using to pull the thread, the needle nose pliers? That link is in the description section. It's a hot link. It takes you right to the page on amazon.com where you can look at that tool. One more thing, if you haven't done so already, I'd love for you to come along with me as I blog on where art and life meet. And I'm on Instagram at Ariane Zersher. So grab something to stitch with, grab a needle and some thread, and let's start exploring. For this circle, I thought I would couch silk and chenille, and I think I'll do two strands of it. I'm going to come up here, and I'm going to lay it down around, and I'm going to go back down into the hole that I, my original thread emerged from. And, and now I'm going to couch it. Thinking maybe the shepherd's silk mermaid dances. I'm going to do my first couch stitch right over this seam where the threads meet. And I'm going to go ahead and couch this in a, hmm, I think I'll use a bouillon knot. So I'm just going to do a tiny little bouillon here. And I think six wraps it's probably enough. Try that. 
I did an in-depth video on the bouillonnette, the cast on bouillon, and I'll put that link in the upper right hand corner. I'm going to keep these pretty close together. When my bouillon gets an uneven, like a little loop here, it's not tight like the rest of them, I can stick the end of my needle in and I slip it in and I just do this to sort of even them out and then I go ahead and pull this down again and what happens is just makes them a bit more even, at least distributed, and then I can go back down into my original into where I emerged and then come back out. Another way to make sure those wraps get evenly distributed is to, before you even pull it through, look at your needle and make sure that they're all lining up and one isn't sort of bolting out, that they're all tightly wrapped next to each other. And that also will help you with just making those bouillons all the same. I'm just gonna keep doing this, going around with my wraps. My husband and I start the morning off with a little reading that we find inspiring or interesting, and then we kind of discuss. And today the reading was about listening to your intuition and being true to yourself. And I often will think about these readings in terms of stitching and what I do with these circles, exploring the creative process. And what I thought of was how when we're starting out, whatever it is creatively, we tend to have particular people that we who inspire us, who are maybe mentors for us, and whose work we even will attempt to emulate. And that, you know, this has been true throughout history. If you look at the great artists that are in museums, Picasso, Brach, they all began by by literally copying master works. And that was how they, they learned and perfected their skills. And then over time, they were still greatly influenced by one another. There was a wonderful exhibit at the Metropolitan Museum of Art here in New York City my husband and I went to, and I just loved it. It was Brock and Picasso, and it showed their work side by side and how to demonstrate how they were influencing each other and, and taking ideas and using them in very, very similar ways. When they were doing their, during their Cubist phase, they were so similar and obviously deeply influenced by one another's work. You know, obviously I'm greatly influenced by Sue's work and her artistry, and I want to use her techniques and the things that she does in my own voice. In the beginning, I didn't, ha I didn't even have a voice. I mean, I, I just was learning. And I think the bigger point is that when I am deeply influenced by someone, it's just important that I credit them and say, you know, this is inspired by or influenced by or using the techniques of, because I don't ever want to come across as someone who's pretending to have come up with, with these various techniques on my own. One of the things I think that's so striking about Sue's work is that, and exciting, is that she started doing something that nobody else was doing. And that's incredible. And she should have, get credit for that. When I started uh, designing jewelry, I was influenced by a couple of different people. And, um, and it, it was a few years before I found my own sort of style and technique that was much more obviously mine. And I don't think there's any shame in that. I think it's good to just uh, acknowledge that and it's okay. It's, it's what we all, we all do. It's how we learn. It's how we get better. It's how we, and hopefully we, we move on and, and we continue to explore and, and we find our, our, our voice. We find our own style and it's specific to us and, and it's unique. And when you're learning anything, that's just part of it. That's part of the process. And that's fine. It's just good to acknowledge it and not feel ashamed of it. There's my little couched silken chenille and using the shepherd silk to couch it with bouillon knots. And now I'm going to figure out what I'm doing in that.
circle. So I'm just doing a fly stitch that kind of cups each of these bouillons in its V and then goes into center. I didn't have the heart to do this on camera, but for those of you who have been following along with these circles and sort of seen how things have evolved over time, starting with being in the beginning Insta Stitch with Sue and then going off into exploring the creative process with these to getting more and more involved in sort of the creative process and using these circles as an exercise really to to explore that. Sue Spargo had done a sunflower as one of her circles for her Insta Stitch with Sue, which I began this as, and then kind of went off on my own when she told me that she was going to be taking all her videos down. I thought, well, I don't want to take all my videos down. I'm going to start designing my own circles and that way I don't have to. Which then led me to say, to think, well, I can't really use that hashtag because this isn't really, I mean, it's inspired by, but it's certainly not her circles anymore. The sunflower that I'd done, I'd done two layers of pico, woven pico petals. I think there were about 20 of them total. And and it was a very, in kind of yellows and mm, some greens, but yellows, you know, shades of yellow. And then, but it was a big circle because the petals extended way out beyond. And because of the color, it really called out to itself. And I thought, as I was looking at the whole, this whole piece as a, as a piece, not just as an individual circle, and it's Sue's design, I decided to take the whole thing out. I know. So I did. I cut everything out, including the wool, the little wool dot, because it was so mangled from all the stitching that had gone on that I just thought, that's it, I'll just cut a new circle and applique it down. But you see, I look at all of this as practice. Like every time I stitch something, whether I keep it or don't, is kind of irrelevant. It's really all about the process of, of stitching. Yes, the end result, especially when it's about the design, the end result is certainly important, but it's not, it's not the whole story. So I'll show you in a second and then we can laugh about it. And here's the thing. I decided because lots of people had asked about woven Pico flower that I did that was just insane. I mean, that I must have done, I don't know, 80 woven Pico petals for the flower. And people have asked, how did you do it? And so I thought, you know, I'll do one. I'll do a, a woven Pico flower and I'll show you how to work that. It's the spot that used to have my sunflower and that I took out. The other one that I took out was this, which was rows and rows. I had 90 bouillon knots ending in a French, a colonial knot, I think. I took those out too. Because I'm going to do my own thing. So I will do a woven pico flower. All right, so let's get back to this guy. What am I doing here? Oh, I didn't even tell you. So this was the dollar thread. This is Kelly Spargo, Sue Spargo's eldest daughter. She designs these and dyes, hand dyes these threads, and they're just beautiful. So I threaded up my, um, to do this, it was an 18 chenille. And now I'm going to do something. And I think I might do something emanating out from here, but I'm not sure what. I kind of wanted, I had this idea I was going to keep it all into the family of greens. Greens going into maybe some blues going into me. This was my shepherd silk that I did the bouillon knots on the outside. Here's my dala and I couched with the bouillon knots my silken chenille. And now I think, I think I'm going to use this one, which I don't have a label on, sadly, so I can't tell you which one it is. I'm going to thread up a number three Milner's. I'm not sure what I'm doing, so I'm doing a three Milner's because maybe I'm going to do a wrap. I think I'm going to do a series of cast on bullions going around just in from the center. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, Eight. The cast on bouillon video that I did is 
in the same video with the bouillon. Uh, you can look at both of those, and I put that link up in the upper right-hand corner earlier. Someone asked me about the cast on bouillon. They noticed that when I end my thread, then I was coming out in front of this one. And that's because I do the, bouillon, the cast on bouillon and the bouillon like I'm doing a back stitch. So just like a back stitch, I'd end my stitch and then I come back out the length of a second stitch and then I'm gonna go back to meet that other one. So in other words, here we go. I'm gonna come close to, but not so close because I don't want these overlapping. So I'm just gonna bring my needle there and I'm gonna do my eight cast ons. I think I did eight, I can't remember now. I hope I did eight. That's what I did this time. Pull my needle through, anchor that down, and come out in front of the next one. It's kind of cool looking. I like it. Obviously, I took the drizzles away. I didn't feel they added anything, and in fact, I felt like they took away from this cast on, which I really like. Using the Dala, I'm going to do a three wrap French knot. I think that's it. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed seeing how this unfolded. Don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe, click on the bell for email notifications. I love hearing from you, so talk to me. Don't forget to scroll down to look at the description section where I leave links for all these different threads and everything that I use in this video. Until next time, here's to exploring together.